safety, industry, academics, and research. Spanning over 27 years, Dr. Rana is a well-respected trainer in hospitality education and has established and developed various prestigious professional hospitality institutes in Northern India. He started his career in the capacity of a chef and worked in various prestigious hotel properties, both in India and overseas. As an established academician, he has published and presented more than 31 research papers in various national and international research journals and conferences. Dr. Rana has been a frequent keynote speaker at various prestigious national and international conferences. He has authored, co-authored, edited eight books on hospitality subjects and contributed chapters to three hospitality and tourism books. Indian Hospitality Congress has conferred the Aspiring Researcher Welcome Award to Dr. Rana for the year 1516. In the year 16, 2016, he received the Educator of the Year Award by International Society for Hospitality Education. And he's also the recipient of Global Hospitality Leadership Award 2018, Academic and Research Excellence Award 2019, and Global Hospitality Award 2019 as best mentor in hospitality education. And he was felicitated at international conference. As a passionate hospitality academician, he had been a mentor and trainer for his students and has ensured the highest quality arrangements in teaching, learning, and student support system that has ensured students being transformed from potential to professionals. Dr. Rana, the stage is yours now. Thank Shall you, I... Dr. Lakshmi. Uh, I think thank you so much, so very much for a very generous introduction. Yes, sir. Welcome, sir. And, uh, I'm obliged. I'm humbled. I'm just a simple hospitality educator trying to do my job with a bit of passion. So that's all about it. Uh, rest other things are just ornamental uh, on a CV of a, on a resume of an educator. Uh, first thing first, before we start this session, I would like to congratulate the organizing committee, and especially you. I think uh, you have actually understood the essence of services. You've been in touch with us for last two days, very meticulous with your work. I think uh, this is the best, uh, finest example. Somebody who is able to provide good services is actually hosting the uh, seminar. So my uh, compliments to you, Dr. Lakshmi. Thank you. Being very meticulous. Dr. Uh, Sarav, uh, Sarav, uh, Sarav. I take the uh, name wrong, Dr. Uh, Dr. Mrs. Sarav, uh, Saravni, is it right? And Dr. Safia, I think they are the uh, co, uh, they are the committee members for this uh, webinar. And Good morning, course, sir. Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Safia. And uh, Professor Veena Pani, the director of the MBA program, and for choosing this very apt theme of the seminar. Uh, Dr. Lakshmi, uh, do I need your assistance? Can you play these slides for me? Yes, sure, sir. One second, sir. Yes. Uh, welcome, sir, uh, uh, Dr. Rana. I am Professor Veena Pani, and I thank you so much for accepting our invitation and being here today. Thank you so much. Sir. Well, the pleasure is likewise, and uh, I'm honored to be here and speaking uh, whatever best I can convey to the students and the academic fraternity. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. I hope the slides are on, on and I think they are visible to everyone. Yes, sir. They are visible. Just give me a second. Okay. Uh, 
uh, I think uh, the theme of this webinar is very apt. We're talking about service sector and we're talking about a sector which contributes 50% to the Indian GDP. I think the very first uh, speaker that we had yesterday, she had elucidated what is the importance of service sector and how do they contribute to the uh, national GDP of India. So it is important to uh, understand what is going to, what are the, what are going to be the effect post pandemic on especially this area of service sector. Now, most of us, we have, uh, we have already know that the COVID-19 pandemic already has the adverse impact on most of the sectors of the economy. And I would say the service sector has been affected the most, the worst. So the focus here today is that I'll be actually focusing on the vertical called tourism and hospitality. Uh, next slide, ma'am. Let me start this session by quoting uh, Robert Scoble. It's he's an American blogger. Uh, you can we can say he's a technical evangelist because he, he has been an author and he has been the technology evangelist with the Microsoft. So he's been part of so many technological revolution. He has very aptly said, "Change is inevitable, and the disruption it causes often brings." both the inconvenience and opportunity. I believe this is very up for this COVID scenario, post COVID scenario. We have been looking at the COVID with the, uh, with the, with the, with the angle that it has, it has brought about certain miseries in our life. It was unforeseen crisis. It has brought out changes in the sphere of human life. But then at the same time, it has, this disruption has caused us and given us the opportunity to rebuild everything. I think some of the earlier dogmas that we've been living with, they have now gone away. We are looking for a new horizon. We are looking for a new future. Uh, let's put it in a very simple terms. A reset button has been pressed. And that is now we now should be looking forward to. Uh, next slide, please. Now, let me just take you back. I do not want to take you back to that unsavory situation of 2000. 20. Let me take you back a year back. I'm talking about this scenario of year 2020, uh, 2019. The, the golden period for tourism, I think we were talking about everything, the economy, the GDP, everything was on the rise. Uh, there, is a, there is a report right in front of you uh, on this slide. This I have quoted from UNWT website. It was posted in January 2020, the closing report of the year 2019. The UNWTO Secretary uh, General, Polo Likashvili. Now, he, when he was presenting the report, there were a few key terms that he used. In these times of uncertain volatility, volatility, tourism remains a reliable economic sector. Very important, very apt in the era of 2019. Now, before 2019, the travel tourism, it has become one of the important sector in the world economy was accounting for around 10% of global GDP and around 320 million jobs worldwide. Next slide, ma'am. Now, let me take you to the scenario of COVID pandemic outbreak. We are talking about the year 2020. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Rao has already pointed out the first coronavirus was identified uh, in Wuhan in December 2019. But then world did not take it very seriously. In the year 2020, uh, specifically, I would mention the date, the landmark date, 30th January 2020, World Health Organization. They declared this as a public health emergency of international concern. And within the shortest special of possible time, this grew up to a pandemic. We, we thought it was going to be an endemic, then we thought it is going to be pandemic, uh, it is going to be epidemic, and finally it turned out to be a pandemic. So on the uh, 21st of July, the, if I take the concern, uh, the, on, by the 21st of July 2022, this pandemic has caused around 567 million cases worldwide and 6.38 million confirmed deaths. So 
to going by the historical standard this is this has been one of the deadliest pandemic in the human history next slide ma'am now how it has disrupted what it has caused you see the every walk of life every sphere of life every business it has been impacted and same was with the tourism industry the flourishing industry in 2019 in matter of minutes in matter of months it came down to grinding halt there was what we uh, there is a term what we call is as domino effect in uh, there was a domino effect on tourism and hospitality now this term what what does it denote it is sort of a chain reaction that happens it has a cumulative effect what happens is one set of events they set off chain of similar events and uh, you can just draw analogy that when you see the rows of falling dominoes this is what happened with the tourism as soon as there was uh this amid this medical emergency came in the travel was affected when travel is affected the hospitality in turn was affected all the economic activity related to these verticals of travel and hospitality they were affected most of the most of the contributor in our tourism and hospitality uh, uh business they are from the small and medium enterprises they were very badly affected so there was a total crumble happening around in the field of tourism and hospitality uh, may i request mayor rest to please to kindly switch off your mic yes thank you then of course uh, it has affected from macro to micro level uh, there is a slight disturbance please may i request Sir Bhaskar, please switch off your mic. Yes, thank you, thank you. Now, from macro to micro level, it has affected everybody. The least, the well-paid job, everybody got affected. They were self-employed. Uh, they were semi-employed. Uh, small, medium entrepreneurship projects. They were all gone. And most of the time, the tourism economy it it is works for the body people as a gig economy. there are certain season engagement only happening around everything everything just went away in couple of months so that was the devastating effect on the industry uh, next slide ma'am now again let's run through this tragedy just to understand what did it do to do to us and how we need to learn from it and look up to the future now impact has been devastating i think there is no understatement to it uh, still i'll run some statistic with you it has caused 72% decline in international tourist arrival in the year 2020 and 70% in the year 2021 if we compare it with the year 2019 so if we come if i combine the both the years the combined losses were 2.1 billion in terms of international arrivals they were reduced so as a result the export revenues that we were earning from international tourism it crashed down to 63% in 2020 and 61% in 21 and on a rough estimation basis the combined losses were somewhere around 2.1 trillion dollars for these two years period look at the staggering amount of losses this last year uh, has uh, has has bared the brunt of this uh, pandemic talking about jobs this pandemic has put up the uh, job of 100 million people at risk and most of them they were from the micro or small or medium enterprise enterprises and of on top of it most of the people who were affected especially in this tourism sector were the women because they actually contribute 54% of the tourism workforce see how the very fabric of the society was disrupted and especially if i look from the angle of tourism and hospitality the aviation industry it was grounded no travel happening around the hotels the online travel agents the tour operators all gone businessless the hotel occupancy the jobs the stock market i think it all fell rock bottom next slide ma'am now along with it we were contemplating the world was contemplating how to bounce back how to revive the tourism and hospitality So when we have seen the one billion lesser international arrivals in the year two thousand twenty, at the same time 
UNWTO, the United Nation World Tourism Organization, they were drafting an action plan on the priorities for tourism recovery. So what they did is they had three pronged approach. First was the focus. This was the advisory given by the UNW to all the governments across the nations, uh, across the world. First prong approach was to manage the crisis and mitigate the impact. Then second was to provide stimulus and accelerating the uh, recovery growth uh, to, uh, to this particular sector. And of course, at the same time, there was eye on the horizon preparing for tomorrow. So what happened is, uh, as we gradually approach the year 2021, I think thanks to our vaccination drive all across the nations, the vaccination campaign happening around, lifting of restrictions around the world, the international tourism started to get uh, recover in July of 2021. Although uh, these figures are far from what we had achieved in the earlier before the crisis, the industry, the tourism and hospitality industry is very resilient industry. By its, by its nature itself. So we could see the revival happening around without much of the support from the government also. And today, in the year, uh, if I look at, the, uh, look at the statistics in the year 2022, the latest UNWTO travel uh, tourism barometer, what it states is that international tourism has seen 182% year on year increase in January, March of 2022. We are on a rebound. We are bouncing back. And there has been uh, uh, there is there has been 117 million international tourists arriving back. So these are certain uh, heartening figures, which seems that industry is on the rise, and very soon we will be able to back to the old glory that we had in the year 2019 and beyond that. Now, ma'am, I would like you to move on the next slide. Yes, thank you. Now, post pandemic. I think things are changed, things are changing, and things are going to change now further also. You see, we have a long-term impact. There is a long-term impact in our collective memory about this uh, COVID pandemic. Now, tourism and hospitality, they've been hardly hit, but at the same time, they have been very resilient. The industry is now reading out the changing consumer behavior. How the new age consumer from travel and hospitality sector, how they're spending now. So that is something they are closely monitoring. That is something they are closely reading, and they are now going to shape up their operation according to it. Now there are many issues, and I would like to address some of the important issues that are going to shape the future of the hospitality industry and, of course, the tourism industry. When I talk about hospitality and tourism, hospitality actually is a subset of tourism industry. Now, the uh, COVID pandemic it is it is going to remain in our collective memory for now quite some time because you see. All of us have felt those devastating effects, and everybody at every level and at every uh, uh, every level of even the global economy, they have suffered. Now, uh, what is happening is slowly with the government assistance and the, from the uh, assistance from the financial institutions, the commerce is now growing back. We are right on the right track. Slowly, it's going to uh, grow, but it is still on the rebound, not yet recovered. Now, what we need to do is we need to have adopted the new standards and values that we have learned during the COVID pandemic. The changes in the behavior of a consumer, that is something that we need to now study and read and research. Then of course, if the industry has to thrive, you see, you see, you change is inevitable. You have to actually experience this as a renaissance period. And if we need to continue, we need to understand it. And then definitely we are going to thrive on that also. So all the new projects that are under development in the tourism and hospitality, they are now planning, considering that they need to also integrate the consumer behavior and habits in their operation or in their long-term planning. Lockdown, the inability to travel, the teleworking, the social distancing, the strict health measures in place, it has all influenced our behavior in one way or the other. And we have not felt them directly, but certainly it has affected us. So there will be some few categories that I'm going to highlight that this changing consumer behavior, how it is going to impact the hospitality and as well as as well as well uh, the tourism, the, the bigger umbrella of hospitality. So if we consider these points, then we will be in a better position to, to, be, to prepare ourselves for success in the future. Next slide, ma'am. 
So all this change in the new consumer era, or we, I would say new habits of the consumer, we need to study them very closely. So now what we have is a new age of travelers. Of this new age of travelers, they have a very different aspiration out of this travel and hospitality sector. And this all this aspiration has been the byproduct, the side effects of this uh, facing this COVID-19 pandemic. What is happening now is that consumers are paying more attention to their hygiene, health procedure. So if the business has to be done, then business has to now heed to these. They have to be now both transparent and reliable in delivering these aspiration of consumer. At the same time, what hospitality industry needs to look on is the wellness industry is now booming. It is now becoming trillion dollar market. And I think most of the hotels or most of the hospitality venues, they are very well positioned. They can, they can take the uh, big pie out of this whole pie uh, because they already have some spa facility in place. So what they need to do is focus on them. They need to just diversify them because they need to add a few more elements that are now growing in demand. That is health diagnostic technology, the special treatment plans, uh, the special treatment plans specially delivered by the experts. And what we want, what the consumer is nowadays demanding is they want to have some programs run in the hotel spa that is built on healing, stress management, emotional balance, and of course, even the yoga and mindfulness. So this is something, uh, an area to capture, an area where you can actually revive your business upon. So the hospitality managers now, they have to be smart businessmen, look up to the uh, changing consumer needs and adapt it themselves too. Next slide, ma'am. And of course, wellness, I think uh, 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 United Nations already emphasized that how important it is for us to have good the mental health and the well-being. And uh, I think most of us, we have already gone through this extreme scenario of isolation during the lockdown. So there is still a handover from uh, of the of these psychological disbalances that we're carrying. So what we need to what what what, be, what as a consumer we might be or what as uh, what as a consumer anybody as a consumer might be actually now focusing on would be well being, the in house exercise, the sports, the fresh and organic food. You need to take care of self, the nutrition, the self care, the re regular medical checkups and all. So people have become aware about all these concerns. They want they, they these these terms were already there, but people were not so aware about them. Post pandemic, they've become aware about all these terms. Uh, next slide, ma'am. The consumption and spending, now, this has entirely changed. You see, now consumers are not spending, they're not on a spending spree. Their focus on the leisure goods, it has decreased. What is happening around this all across the nations, the inflation rate is rising. I think uh, I was checking on the figure, uh, India's consumer price index, what it states is India's rate of inflation is 7.01 in June 2021. So this is all because of the brunt of the, uh, the, uh, the manufacturing, the production that were shut down, people becoming unemployed. So that brunt also we need to absorb a period of time. So there will be some inflation. Post pandemic then there has been further escalation due to this uh, Russia and Ukraine fiasco, the collapse of the manufacturing economy of China. So all across the world, you find the pinch happening around in terms of inflation. So people are now mindful about where do they, what do how do they spend and where do they spend. So consumer, you need to understand they are now opting for better quality products at a value pricing. Keeping in this scenario, what's happening around, and there won't be any spontaneous purchasing. There will be more pre-planned purchase that is going to happen now. Uh, next slide, ma'am. Digitalization. I think uh, this is something that came as a savior for all of us. As a, as a hangover of pandemic uh, crisis, I think we are still having online webinar. And I think why not quote this uh, session only? I think this is only possible because once we started this uh, online webinar uh, process, now we've got used to it and now we find it very comfortable, convenient and more cost effective also. So the online webinars, the meetings, they, they have now become the usage platform. 
I think at my university, we have adopted that most of our important meeting, we do it online. Uh, rather than just calling everybody every, every day from the office, most of the day-to-day uh, -day meeting, we manage it online. So this has become a sort of a non a fundamental component in our working habit. Now, home delivery services, contact like pay, uh, contactless payments, the medical appointment through video conferences, the online purchasing, they're all pushing us toward the, uh, the acceleration to the uh, era of digitalization. And of course, I think it is going to be something really good happening in this field. Uh, next slide, ma'am. Again, I think it is this this uh, term remote working is built on the other, the last one that I discussed. Uh, most of the employers, they've also noticed that there was better productivity and reduced cost because the, uh, they were not operating the physical offices at that time during the COVID pandemic. And there was decreased staff absenteeism. So through this digitization, they found that remote working is a better solution, not for all, all industries, not for all working, but, but for some of them. Now, since the teleworking has proven to be very, very useful, productive and successful, I have a belief that it is going to, uh, most of the organization, they're going to retain this concept, maybe for a certain definite period of time, or maybe they might be having this hybrid arrangement for workers also. So we as a hotelier, we as, a, uh, as the personnel from the tourism, what we will be looking for is we need to be now mindful of the new breed of clientele that is going to be visiting our hotels. Right. Uh, next slide, ma'am. Then of course, the travel trends, they have changed completely. The reasons for travel, it has changed completely. Now, according to the uh, survey by booking.com, the travel restrictions, uh, they have changed the way the consumer is now demanding the new ways to travel and new ways to actually consume the travel experience. Now, there are few options that have emerged out of it. The greener destination. People, uh, the, you see, uh, what came as a savior to us is our domestic tourism. When the international tourism has still not uh, come to the full-fledged uh, way, Still, I think the greatest savior for all of us had been the domestic tourism. So the concept was travel closer to the home, travel by your own vehicle. So this is still going to be something that is going to stay in place. The, the interest in the rural tourism, because you were locked down in the urban spaces, you, want to, you were craving to travel to countryside. So these are the concepts that had now uh, given the new travel aspiration to the consumer. Uh, next slide, ma'am. Then of course, the hotel industry within the subs within uh, which being the subset of the travel industry, they've also taken up to this challenge, and it is now very imperative that they also adapt to this changing scenario. Now, most of the hotel op operators, what they need to demonstrate is they need to demonstrate demonstrate the capacity to to adapt to these new realities of the market, and of course, then react also, not only realize the realities but also adapt, integrate plan and have new rules and regulation in place. Now, this is also the opportunity to think out of the box, be creative, to come up with some novel solutions. So uh, what I'm going to do is in the following slide is I'm going to discuss few procedures and standards that hotels they need to adopt. I would say uh, at least for a short or a medium term basis. Uh, next slide, ma'am. The The planning is very important. The planning of the hotel operations is very important. So what has happened after COVID, the new standard operating procedures have come into the e play. They've been, uh, they've been prescribed by the uh, Minister of Tourism. They've been pre prescribed by the FSSI uh, of India, Food Safety and Security Authority of India. So keeping all this in view, and still the government has not withdrawn these uh, regulations as if of now. So all the verticals, all the departments in the hotel, they need to actually now address this issue. If you talk about the information technology, the hotels now they need to invest in the new technology, the QR coding techniques, the auto check-in checkouts, the mobile payment, the augmented and virtual reality, because this is now going to be more effective. The, 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 the whole consumer has shifted now online. They are now, you'll find them eyeballing your website. So this is something that you need to take care of the IT verticals. The food and beverage, 
you need to again retrain your staff for certain challenges in the operation that have been brought about by the COVID. The table setting and uh, uh, layouts, few important things now have been omitted as a part of practice also. Adaptations of services, the how the buffet service now has to be more hygienic, more clinically safe. Same thing goes to the revenue management, how you need to forecast for the long terms and uh, how do you do your uh, short term forecasting. Because you see, the long term plans are now gone. People now they plan as high as three years and short term goes for maybe six months or maybe a year. So this is to actually uh, make, uh, make the whole operation to have uh, a very, very uh, uh, proactive kind of a contingency plan. The front office, the maintenance, the sales and marketing, all the verticals of the hotel, all these departments, the hotels, they need, they have the new SOPs in place. Next slide, ma'am. The planning. You see, again, when you are planning an operation, you need to be very, very particular about how it has to be done. There has to be, uh, the, the management has to be now slightly proactive that uh, at a shortest possible time, they have to come up with certain solutions. So there are there are new uh, scenarios that might emerge. Till the time, till the time, I think we are completely safe from this pandemic. We need to be very agile in our, in our decision making. Next slide, ma'am. Of course, this is something interesting, a byproduct a side effect of the pandemic that has brought about certain changes in the hotel. You see the new hotels that have been now designed or planned, all the consideration, all the learning from the COVID pandemic is now being translated here. Now the, the physical spaces of the hotels are being now rethought. What we are now focusing as a hotel is cleanliness, sanitization, reduction of non-essential elements. Of course, people, uh, the housekeepers are now also focusing on even reducing the cushions, the, the decorative uh, elements, the newspaper, the magazine. They want to have that minimalistic kind of approach because that will facilitate the ease of use. Then, of course, uh, pandemic, they have always shaped our, the way we have built our environment. If we look at the history, there has been symbiotic relation between the city architecture and the epidemics. Uh, let me just recall the 19th century, the cholera epidemic. It has uh, it has brought about certain intervention in the urban design, the wide what you call boulevard or streets. There were expensive public parks, the citywide civic system. They were all the byproduct of this uh, cholera epidemic of 19th century. Then, of course, uh, uh, in the 19th and 20th century, there was an epidemic of uh, tuberculosis. It has contributed to what we call it now modernistic architecture. So you see, these these uh, we have been subjected to these kind of uh, epidemics, if not the pandemics in the past, and how it has actually brought about changes in our way of life. The history is more or less repeating itself. Now these are what we call transformational or morphological changes, and. Uh, in, uh, we are going to apply them in this place we are going to reside in the place we are going to inhabit so hotels are now thinking to have flexibility in their usage of sp spaces same lobby in times of crisis can be utilized for maybe uh, for medical support maybe for isolation center the guest room now does not only means the place wherein the guest is going to just stay overnight or rest it might be extended to eating exercising or maybe small get together also so now there's going to be a judicious usage of space the kind of material that we are going to use there has to be usage of smart material you see hard flooring simple bedding material easily cleanable bathrooms antibacterial material the seamless surfaces the limited piece of furniture this are all being thought of because it will aid in cleaning and also mitigating any kind of fear about the contagions. Now, of course, a new trend that is now setting up in the US is the, the well building certification. Uh, most of the new buildings that are coming up, they are being certified by the uh, Institute, International Well Building Institute. Now, uh, this provides a roadmap for creating and certifying spaces uh, which will upgrade the human health and well being. So, what this uh, certification, the wellness certification brought in about is they have brought in about a new new terminology. We call it that 
biophilic design. So most of the hotel architects, what they're doing is they're planning the integrate the biophilic design in their interior spaces. And uh, this biophilic design is what is meant. It is meant to do increase the occupants connectivity with the natural environment. In doing so, what we're doing is we're trying to reduce stress. We are trying to improve cognitive function. We are trying to improve or enhance the mood, the health, and the well-being. So, see the psychology in the whole part of this design. Then, of course, the seamless technology, the, the digitalization. There will be now touchless check-in. There will be now digital concierge services. There will be touchless guest room locks and keys. There will be motion-activated doors. There will be voice control, uh, the voice control commands, and maybe some self-cleaning apparatus in the bathrooms also. So all of this has now arrived. They are already there and they're going to stay in the guest service aspect. So even the technology will to contribute in how we communicate, keep the continuous communication with our guests. So most of it now, these mobile savvy guests, they have most of the communication with the hotel through this only to uh, various uh, applications, WhatsApp, uh, various applications that have been brought about. So hotel design now are going to actually cater for our received needs and even for the uncertain needs of the future. Next slide, ma'am. Of course, the health and safety, it's already in place. I've already said. Now, one of the surveys uh, by the intra-European travel from European Travel Commission, what it does it state? It's very important. I'll quote it for you. Two-third of the, America, the Europeans, they feel safer and relaxed to enjoy their trip when strict health and safety protocols in, are in place. If you look at the look at this slide right in front of you, all almost all the international chains around the world, they have their safety and cleaning programs. Like uh, Accor Hotels and Resort, it has all stay well. Uh, Hilton has clean stay. Wyndham Hotel has count on us. They're reassuring that our systems are in place. We are keeping our hotel spaces neat, clean, hygienic for you and that is the reassurance they are giving right and that has to be also maintained now next slide now uh, hotels also need to have uh, rethink the sales and marketing strategies you see you have to increase your visibility and return by reinventing how we can sell the same spaces of the hotel for different other uses so now Hotels are not selling their spaces only for like staying in the hotel or maybe uh, using the food and beverage services. There is more to it now. Now there is a there is a uh, right in front of your slide. There is there is a there is a there is about the hotel chain and what strategies they are working for. Now BNB hotel they are working the you can you can have the workroom from nine to five pm flexible one. And in the evening, they can resell this uh, room to other, another guest. So within that day, you have two guests staying in the very same uh, room. So that is called maximizing mini max, uh, uh, maximizing your earning from this minimum of uh, usage of your resources. Then another chain that called Scandic Hotels that runs uh, at the various hotels in Scandinavia. Uh, they are they are giving their spaces for uh, work uh, for workplaces uh, for uh, workstations on daily, weekly, or monthly basis. So there is a huge quantum shift that's happening on how to better utilize your hotel space. That idea is also now catching up very fast. You see hotels amounts to investment, uh, a huge investment and the requisite ROI has to be there. So just by only selling the rooms, you cannot have those now. You have to think of, you have to think out of the box to increase your revenues. Uh, next slide, ma'am. The people management, very important. The, of all the hardware, this is the software that is most important. You see, what has happened is millions of hotel staff, they had put on their career on the hold. And in between, some of them, they were laid off. What happened is, now when the industry has recovered back, there is a problem of human resource. The people who were laid off, they they, they experimented, they were absorbed in other jobs, which they've heavily settled down and thus creating a small vacuum. The new people, the new workforce is still yet to join the industry, go through their hotel management courses. And this has now put up the pressure on the uh, hotel management. 
so they are now looking for uh, various ways to attract the new talent or rather uh, attract the old talent back to their uh, uh, to their workplace now hotels also now have to look into the welfare facilities the training the retraining the upskilling and upskilling with this new current scenario and they have to be now more empathetic with their staff because they have suffered a lot uh, very recently i along with my training placement officer we did a small uh, write up which is now going to be published in the next month uh, here we had uh, the talk with the various managers and the uh, 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 down the line staff the people uh, the, now the hotels are now into uh, making new strategies like they are attracting talent to have flexible working hours uh, overtime was not was not the part of the bargain especially in the hotel and tourism industry and some of the hotels are also now planning to introduce it now so you see these changes these in this uh, scenarios they are going to actually now even uh, going to push the way we have been managing our people next slide ma'am now of course i think uh, technology we have understood the importance of technology uh, as soon as the covid hit in the first airline in the world the united airlines they brought in the electrostatic sprayers they were spraying the uh, uh, what you call uh, uh, spray they were spraying the um, uh, the material to sanitize their airplanes same kind of technology was brought into hotels and those who whoever could do it uh, in the fastest possible time they were able to adapt to the new uh, new changing in business then of course there is now challenge to have a contract like service not every in all homes are going to afford that but they have to actually fall into place there are 10 hotels that might adopt this but there are 20 others they might not adopt this so technology is now progressing it is being adopted by the industry which usually used to be a hotel industry is actually known for uh, adopting the technology at the uh, at the least possible opportunity but now they have adopted and they're going to move forward the fingerprint scan the face recognition now it is going to stay for a quite a longer period of time in the hotel operations next slide ma'am the important thing that the whole world is discussing is sustainability you see united nations has already put in 17 sustainable goals they had been on the paper but nobody did realize the how important they are what happened is like uh, when uh, during the lockdown, when the whole world witnessed that smoke, it disappeared over the major cities. They saw the wildlife returning to the urban spaces. And this is where the newfound consumer consciousness it arose. This gave us the feeling that we are all connected and that our future of planet, our future of a planet is our collective responsibility. The SDGs were already there, but we realized them, we understood them when we were faced with this pandemic situation. So what we need to do is that on the path of recovery, let's not forget the travel and tourism industry, they need to be both sustainable and inclusive. So new normal that we're talking about, that is that we have already arrived at, it is going to actually involve both people, planet, and both of them looking after each other. So that is going to be the approach of sustainability and all the hotel operation, they need to include the element of sustainability in all their recovery initiative. You see, it is now the norm. It is now what is required. It is now the new age traveler is also expecting from the hotel divisions. Uh, next slide, ma'am. Now, you see, when whenever we are developing a hotel what we tend to do is we often focus on location location and location but then of course now the new thing that is has come in is planning planning and planning so there is now noticeable increase in the number of firms that are now doing scenario based planning because they want to react swiftly to the changing economic conditions economy is in shambles it will take some time. There will be now upward and downturn that is going to happen around for another two, three years in economy. So you, your, your 
planning should be as such that you should be you are able to react swiftly then only you are going to adapt so all the hotel companies who will have who will have this culture the ecosystem of adaptability and a positive attitude toward change they are going to they are going to show resilience and they are going to lead by example uh, as the charles dominant rightly put in it is not the strongest of the species that survive it is not the most intelligent it is that one that is most adaptable to change they are going to survive they are going to lead and this makes me arrive at the the final slide yes ma'am next slide last one last one now at the closing thought i would like to quote uh, andy go the founder of the intel in 1994 he made this statement which is very apt in today's scenario also bad companies are destroyed by crisis good companies survive the crisis but the great company they are defined by the crisis thank you so much and now i will be open to questions yes sir uh, there are few questions uh, in the chat box uh, one question is uh, uh, has there any be, has there been any new subject introduced in the light of pandemic in your university uh, dr safia uh, what we have done is since uh, i think we have been talking about and this talk has not only been on the paper all the universities all the academician who would like to contribute they have also have to have that swift thinking in one of our uh, final year uh, subject in one of our final year courses what we have done is we have added a topic called new trends and quite often i will leave it to the faculties to write the content for that syllabus so what we have done is the the uh, in the in our housekeeping as a subject we have added the usage of biostatic sprayers the cleaning signs the hygiene so partly we have added so that students when they when my students they arrive in the industry they are acquainted with new terms that now the industry is using post pandemic so there is some changes some uh, some in some uh, uh, some universities they have done it in my university we have done it uh, in uh, in some of the core subjects and uh, as and when the things are going to progress we are going to integrate so one more question sir uh, like this question is uh, with travel industry moving towards customized travel plans wellness tourism etc how expensive is travel going to be in the future will be leisure travel combining business needs and leisure become more popular i did get the first part of your question i think uh, how expensive I, is it going to be i repeat sir uh with the travel industry moving towards customized travel plans wellness tourism etc how expensive is travel going to be in the near future i One think question uh, yes i'll answer the first part then i'll move on to the second one yes see this is a fragmented question so first part is you see uh we have understood the changing customer need or consumer need and we are talking about inflation we are talking about rebound on the economy so given all these parameters there will be there will be there will be spending on travel because this is the innate desire people love to travel the people are not born to stay in indoor they are they are, they are supposed to travel so explore but the nature of uh, nature of travel is not going to be very exorbitant it will be value based cost effective so there has to be uh what i would say that not any kind of costly proposition is going to work out in the near future i hope that answers the first part of the question and what is the second part of the question will be leisure travel combining business needs and leisure become more popular yes yes this is a new term leisure leisure is a new term that you see we we, we got acquainted with so many new terms uh, after this pandemic leisure is something that's come in vacation is something that has come in so this uh, these are like what you call these are our answer to the being adapting to the new norm that is happening in terms of travel so this is going to pick up companies will be judicious about how they spend on their executives 
so executives also would love to travel and along with it they would like to have that leisure uh, leisure stay that that is the future that is the future right now thank you sir one more question sir is yes. the work vacations go to be new segment for tourism industry is uh, please come again vacations yes of course i think uh, as already i in the, in the previous question i think uh, all these new trends they are catching up fast because we are catering to the new uh, new breed of uh, travelers and these are all out of the certain aspiration they have so every new concept in terms of villager in terms of staycation this is going to this is going to stay for some time now <clears throat> one more question sir what are the technological tools used in the tourism industry to uplift the position after the pandemic you see i cannot name one of them there are lot many things happening on the digital front uh, i would not use the word only technology on the digital front why because most of the guest connect it has shifted online now my industry the hotel industry it used to be very very reluctant when we used to talk about adoption of technology are hamare job chale jayenge we will lose our jobs to the robots and something else that was the innovation the industry was having and industry had a thought personalized service one to one human element but after this pandemic that human element we can maintain but then we need to adopt the uh, technologies now the industry is talking about iot internet of the things now they are talking about the augmented reality all their sales pitch presentations they are using the use uh, they are now putting the use of the augmented reality and the virtual reality so industry is now catching up on all this aspect and technology for the uh, coming future it is going to stay with this industry so uh, one more question sir does tourism sector evolved post pandemic as planned before pandemic pandemic you see pandemic was never planned okay so most of the scenario these are unplanned only thing that we need to plan for is the unplanned agenda what might happen next tomorrow or day after so the agile decision making the the new workforce they should be trained for certain competencies they should think out of the box they should be innovative they should be they should have the leadership uh, the kind of leadership at their own level wherein they are able they are competent enough to take few decision and save the money for the company so all this all this management mantras i think they are going to change in the near future also i hope i been able to answer i think uh, uh, i do not claim to be expert on everything thank you sir over to you uh thank you sir sir could you stop the sharing sir i'm sorry i think sharing is from your side ma'am yeah yeah sorry sorry sir yeah thank you sir firstly sir i thank you for a very informative and enriching talk of yours sir in this session sir has started by explaining domino effect on tourism and hospitality industry sir touched upon jobs smes hotel occupancies were all affected in this time period mounting to 2.1 trillion dollars loss sir touched upon the importance of understanding new age travelers behavior importance of including wellness programs in hotels digitalization touched upon new travel trends that emerged Uh, highlighted the new procedures and standards that have to be adopted in terms of using it upgradation uh, health and safety etc touched upon people management and sustainable practices that are required to be followed in tourism and hospitality industry sir i thank you for your enriching speech enriching lecture talk once again sir thank you very much likewise uh, dr lakshmi i am honored to be part of this uh, national webinar and i hope uh, whatever the experience of bit of knowledge i had i have been able to make a